Last video we have proved the riemann lebesgue lemma for real Fourier coefficient and in this video I'm going to prove the riemann lebesgue theorem for complex Fourier series. So let f be a complex value function with the real part and imaginary part integrable and we call f integrable if it is so and we define such function on the uh, closed interval negative part to pi and let f be equal to f1 plus if2 and we are going to compute 2 pi cn where cn is the uh, coefficient of the complex Fourier series of f and 2 pi cn is equal to the integral from negative pi to pi f1 plus i f2 times e to the negative i n x and this is equal to the integral from negative pi to pi f1 plus i f2 times cosine n x minus psi n x and if we separate the uh, real part and imaginary part we get this expression and indeed such expression should tend to zero why because they are of the form of like this which is pi times 1 over pi times the integral from negative pi to pi of an integrable function times sine or cosine nx and remember this is indeed the Fourier coefficient of the, Fourier, uh, of the real Fourier series and therefore all these four terms will tend to zero and therefore such complex number will also tend to zero as n tends to positive or negative infinity. Next, we are going to discuss another point of view of a Fourier series. So, to, to keep the notation simple, we will uh, define two spaces. First is R2pi. R2pi is the space of all complex valued integrable function and C with the space of all complex by sequences Cn with n running from negative infinity to positive infinity such that Cn will tend to zero as n tends to positive on negative pi and as we've discussed uh, indeed Fourier series can generate a map from R2 pi to C and we define uh, the map phi from f to this f hat n and indeed what is this? this is indeed the cn the complex Fourier series coefficient and there's a question is phi 1 to 1 or on 2? and in fact this is not and it is neither 1 to 1 or on to and how to prove it first of all we would state a theorem and just such theorem we cannot prove it uh, by the previous theorem we have done and therefore I will leave it uh, in the later video and this is the uniqueness theorem for a Fourier series it states that two functions have the same Fourier series if and only if they are the same almost everywhere and you may have a question well if they are same almost everywhere it is very obvious that they have the same Fourier series however indeed if we go from the uh, left hand side to the right hand side this is indeed very difficult and therefore such difficulty can be solved by uh, proving more and more theorem and therefore I will leave it in a later video and there is another part that is asking whether the map is on to and indeed it's not on to and I will prove it later because we do not have enough information and uh, let's discuss the properties that are related to R2 pi C and phi first of all phi is a linear map and r2 pi c forms a vector space over the set of real numbers and the set of complex numbers well to prove that it is a linear map uh, i will prove that phi f plus g is indeed equal to phi f plus phi g 
Well, it is very obvious from the uh, from the properties of integration. And phi f plus g is equal to one over two pi times the integral from negative pi to pi f plus g e to the negative i n x. And immediately we can use the linearity of the integration to divide this uh, this expression into the second line. And we can quickly see that this is indeed phi f and this is indeed phi g. And we have proved that phi is a linear map. Also, second, that if f is inside r2 pi and it is k times differentiable such that the kth derivative of f is lies inside r2 pi, then we have the head of f to the kth derivative of n is equal to i n to the kth power times uh, f hat n. And I will leave the proof in the next video. And there are also some more properties that are related to r2 pi c and phi. And after that, we can discuss the convergence of the Fourier series. See you in the next video.